Good morning and welcome back to the latest edition of the Invest Talk Market Analysis for the week ending April 28th, 2023. Appreciate you all tuning in to our podcast, this channel, and subscribing to both. So uh, I'm Justin Klein, host of Invest Talk, and today I'm going to title the video Markets Climb the Proverbial Wall of Worry. And that's not talked about enough, is really the, the sentiment shifts that that happen within markets and and uh, you know, I'll pivot quickly over to this is the NYSE. We had really negative sentiment back uh, in the fall. Uh, you know, uh, just hearing listeners and people that I talk to regularly, uh, they're just very, very bearish. Uh, and you know, we've been kind of working off that um, that negative sentiment uh, as liquidity has improved. Right? We talked about the dollar uh, declining, uh, and and that's helped with liquidity. And then uh, ultimately, that's what happens is the markets climb uh, that proverbial wall of worry. Um, so that's kind of what you see here. Um, so I'm going to go over the um, economic data. And we're going to start off on Monday. You have the Richmond Fed Manufacturing Index that came at negative 10. So can you continue deceleration uh, in the manufacturing sector? Uh, the bright spot was really new home sales. Uh, look at this. Uh, it bottomed uh, same thing back in the fall, and it continues to to rise. And new home sales is really where um, you know the, the the home builders are able to offer low mortgage rates, five percent, right? They're buying points, and they're still uh, earning a pretty <coughs> sizable uh, margin uh, on on their homes that they're selling. So um, that's why the home builders can do well, and why you know people that are shorting them, thinking oh interest rates are up. You know, it's a it it just goes to show one factor. Right, I'll pivot over here to the ITB. Look at the ITB. This is the home construction index. Just continues to grind higher, Be and and people are are shorted, and they they have PTSD, and they look back at 08 and they said oh that's going to happen again. Uh, there's multiple dynamics that play into uh, every single market, and just because interest rates are up doesn't mean that uh, housing uh, home builders have to fall apart. There, are, there are other aspects, right? Everyone else is is rate locked, and and um, uh, the the average home seller, right, in the existing home market, they're not offering five percent mortgages. They can't do that, right? Um, but the home builders can, so that's what you're. That's the dynamic you're seeing there. It's pretty interesting. Uh, durable goods, new orders. That was nice, uh, nicely up month over month. So that's a bit of a positive. Real GDP uh, in the first quarter, one point one percent. So you can see the economy continues to decelerate from uh, the, the third quarter, and you know we're likely to see a recessionary environment uh, sometime in the back half of the year. Now, probably minor. Right, minor recession. To to be frank, um, it's not going to be this. Uh, I, I call it an inflationary recession. We're used to a deflationary recession. Remember, this is real GDP, real meaning it's cutting out the inflation rate. So that brings you down to one point one. But if you go nominal GDP, let's see if we can bring that up. Let's just go U.S. GDP. Here's real monthly GDP. Let's pull that up real quick. It's going higher, right? It continues to go higher. Even when you go back to uh, early last year, right? When you had, quote unquote, two negative quarters of, of GDP, uh, real GDP growth. It was still going up, right? Nominal GDP is going up. And guess what? Earnings are priced nominally. They're not adjusted for inflation. So something a lot of people are not understanding, they just haven't really experienced, haven't experienced a, an inflationary recession. That's kind of what we're, we're in right now, okay? Or, or headed into. So it doesn't mean that the world has to fall apart. And people hear recession, they think, oh, wait, don't have that PTSD. Don't be a slave to your experiences from you know, 15 years ago. It's a very different time, okay? Pending home sales, right? That was down 5%. Pending home sales, existing home sales, down 5% month over month. So higher interest rates certainly um, hurting uh, the existing home market. Manufacturing index, Kansas City, down 20, negative 21. Once again, manufacturing continues to be on the ropes. Core PCE index, 4.6%. So we're talking about inflationary recession. So <clears throat> this is 
still remains relatively elevated, but a lot of this is base effects. Once again, going to decelerate in the back half of the year, uh, back closer to that 2 to 3% range. But for the month of March, I mean, this is old data too, the month of March uh, is, you're talking about data that was nearly two months ago now, okay? Market's open on Monday, it's going to be May. Core PCE, month over month, that was flat, right? Month over month. U.S. real disposable income, this is what I want to talk about. Um, remember, this is real, so disposable income. People ha are continuing to have more money, right, in their pocket, after inflation, after paying all their bills. This is a healthy consumer, right, basically since the summer of last year. Feeling more confident. And thus, personal consumer expenditures month over month continue to be positive. Right? Basically, what's this? Uh, six of the last seven months. So that's good. So <laughs> what you see here is a, a mixed environment. Obviously, manufacturing continues to struggle as we produce less and, and, and demand less, right? We focus more on services as the economy continues to reopen and people adjust to post COVID life. Now let's pivot over to the, the markets. Um, <clears throat> we'll go over to NYSE. And once again, that, that continues to, to grind higher, uh, obviously weighed down by the small caps, which are uh, heavily weighted towards uh, the, those, uh, invest, the, those, those commercial banks. There's a lot of those in the small cap index. And FRC, right, uh, went out this weekend, First Republic, uh, going to receivership, and it's the latest uh, small bank or mid-sized bank to fail. So there continues to be that type of headline, but you know that that's more impetus for the Fed to continue to pivot. All right. Actually, let's go back here. The odds of a Fed rate hike still at eighty four percent next week. Okay. So <clears throat> something to to watch, but um, you know it's it's more headline news than uh, impactful. On the broad economy okay let's uh, go over to the credit markets I always like to look at that credit spreads <clears throat> you're not breaking down you know um, and this is a hallmark of an inflationary recession right deflation makes it hard for companies to pay back their debts this is why I say it's better <clears throat> to take credit risk in this environment, in an inflationary environment, than it is to take duration risk, long, right, going out longer um, in time on the maturities. <clears throat> so that's why TLT, right, it's rallied recently. But look at this downtrend here, right? You're getting, you're not taking credit risk and you're going out long in duration. You want to be the opposite, right? You want to be short in duration and taking credit risk. Okay, that's why SH uh, short-term high yield bonds have have uh, have outperformed, right? Let's do this. SHYG to the TLT. Look at this. This is SHYG, right? Short-term high yield to long-term government. This continues to grind higher. Okay, so <clears throat> understand those dynamics and. And, um, you know, uh, you're going to have bouts of uh, risk-off sentiment within the, the corporate bond market. But despite us kind of slow economy moving into an inflationary recession, you know, the, the credit markets aren't really selling off. The move index, that had a little bit of spike up earlier in the week and came right back down. So no big worry on that front. The VIX, <clears throat> the VIX is plumbing to new lows, right? 16, that's obviously positive for risk assets. Let's look at CMBS. This is an area that a lot of people have been talking about and not breaking down, right? Had that big sell off <clears throat> on, um, you know, there have been some bankruptcies within the, the office market, the commercial real estate market, um, but that's not flashing warning signs again, at least not yet. Uh, the banking index that continues to meander lower. Uh, this is a good example, right? Um, <clears throat> technically. Bearish consolidation. You down move and chop sideways. That's bearish consolidation. So that's why I've said these these, these regional banks are not good risk versus rewards. Uh, the ten year that continues to chop in a range, and, and I think that's kind of what you're you're going to get here <clears throat> until there's a resolution of uh, you know where of 
monetary policy is, is truly headed. Uh, there, there continues to be <clears throat> pricing in a f- rate cuts later this year, next year, uh, and I think that's still going to be the case, um, but maybe not as aggressively as the market has uh, continued to price in. And until there's a resolution of that, I think that's what you get, that, that choppy sideways action within the, uh, the treasury market. The dollar, the dollar continues to, uh, continues in a downtrend, not finding much traction to the upside. I think the dollar is uh, headed lower. MS gold is GDX. GDX, just a, a mild pullback here into support, right? This previous high is going to be support, and it has been, right? You saw that on Thursday and a little bit of a rebound. Uh, <clears throat> the actual gold price, just bullish consolidation, right? The opposite of what you see with the baking index. Up move, sideways chop. That's bullish consolidation. So looks fine there going into uh, the Fed meeting. <coughs> Energy stocks. Let's go here. Energy stocks also bullish consolidation. So you continue to see uh, all in the commodity space uh, when it comes to energy, precious metals, definitely the best place to be. Silver to gold ratio also um, doing just fine. Looks like it's headed uh, higher. Uh, basic materials, IYM. A little bit weaker, uh, a little bit uh, more murky there. Uh, you have copper uh, pulling back, uh, but overall still in that broader uptrend. Uh, industrials, that one uh, also kind of in uh, a choppy pattern, but once again, bullish consolidation from this up move, right? Just a lot of chop ready probably for that next move uh, higher. <coughs> um, so that's that's really it, right? We're, we're, we're Probably in this choppy period, the transportation index, that, that remains um, kind of on the weaker side. So that's probably the biggest worry, I would say. Um, investment banks also not looking uh, fantastic either. So those are, those would probably be the negatives. But if you look at the broad S- S&P, you know, this continues to grind higher. And I think this probably gets here, right? 4,315. I think 4,300 is, is in the cards, right? We've... <coughs> We continue to make a series of higher highs and higher lows. That is an uptrend. And until there's some sort of shift in sentiment in a dramatic way, I think we're, we've shifted from very bearish in the fall to probably more neutral. And it, it, remember, the market's a pendulum going back and forth. And it went to very bearish sentiment in the fall. We're probably headed to probably too bullish sentiment by maybe this fall. Um, you know, maybe, maybe it's late summer. Who knows exactly when it's going to be. But... <clears throat> You're probably going to feel it, right? The 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 the, uh, the media will probably say all is clear, everything's fine, and that's probably when you want to be a little bit more cautious. But as of right now, the markets continue to call, climb that wall of worry, and you have to be cognizant of that. Uh, you want to get, don't want to get too much in cash, too short, you know, in this environment where, uh, you know, volatility is low, credit spreads aren't widening out, everything's, you know, okay, it's fine. Uh, and when, when, when you're in that environment, markets tend to grind higher, and that's what you've seen. <clears throat> and for the near term, that's probably what you're going to continue to see until we get to that sentiment inflection point, which we're not quite there yet. All right, that does it for me. I appreciate you all tuning in to this channel and our podcast, Invest Talk. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. A reminder of the, that the contents of this video are for educational purposes only. Should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell security or to participate in investment strategy. The views are my own and do not represent those of KPP Financial or those associated. Have a wonderful weekend.